Hey guys, hope you're doing well. So many of you have shown interest in Ontario PNP. And why not? Ontario is certainly the most popular Canadian province among immigrants. Why? Due to its diversity and the opportunities that it has to offer. So this video is all about the different streams of Ontario PNP program. If you're a skilled worker, haven't got a Canadian degree or a job offer, you can get a nomination from Ontario for your permanent residency. If you're an international student, completed your graduation, post-graduation or PhD in Ontario, you got a chance for the nomination. If you're an entrepreneur from outside of Canada looking to start your business in Ontario, you've got a chance to get the nomination. So in this video, we'll talk about all those different streams. We'll talk about the overview, the different streams that are there, the eligibility criteria of each stream and the process to apply as well. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload Canadian immigration and lifestyle videos. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button and yes, press that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. All right, before we discuss the serious part, let me tell you that now I'm here on Instagram as well. This is all about fun about my life here in Canada. So if you're there on Insta, my ID is Dreamers Abroad. Okay, now guys, I'll be adding this video into the same playlist about Canada PNP programs. So if you want to know about the details of any of the PNP programs, you can just come over to this Canada PNP programs playlist in my channel Dream Abroad and you'll find detailed videos of almost all the PNP programs. Also here you'll find the introductory video about the OINP. So if you want to know about the overview of the program, you can check out this video and the other video about the HCP stream. But since this video is about the different streams of Ontario PNP program, let me first list out all of them and then we'll discuss about each one of them. So OINP can be categorized into three different categories. The first one is the employer job offer category. The second one is business category. The third one is human capital category. Now, each category has different streams underneath them. The first one, the employer job offer category, has got three different streams. Foreign worker stream, international student stream, and in-demand skills stream. The business category has got just one stream, the entrepreneur stream. Now, the human capital category is further subdivided into two subcategories, Ontario's express entry and international graduates. Now these two subcategories have got different streams. Ontario's Express Entry has got French speaking skilled worker stream, human capital priority stream, and skilled trade stream. The international graduates subcategory has got master's graduate stream and PhD graduate stream. Okay, now let's talk about each one of them in detail. All right, let's start with the employer job offer category. As I told you, there are three different streams, foreign worker, in-demand skills and international students. The first two are open for foreign workers in and outside of Canada having a job offer. And the third stream is for international students in and outside of Canada with a job offer. As the name and the description suggest, a job offer is a mandatory document when it comes to this category. So it is required for all three of them. Now there's a condition on the first two that employers must demonstrate that reasonable efforts were made to recruit a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident prior to offering that position to that particular applicant. Unless the applicant has a work permit or the employer has got an LMIA for that position. For the international student stream, there is no such condition. Now talking of the job offer requirements, it should be full-time and permanent work based in Ontario and the position necessary to business. This is common for all three of them. Now for foreign worker, the job category should belong to NOC 0, A or B and the salary should belong to the median wage level. For in-demand skills, it should be NOC C or D and the salary should also be median wage level. However, for international student, the job should belong to NOC 0, A or B but the wage or the salary might be low wage level. Now, what are these levels? You can check it out on the official website of Government of Ontario. Now, there's some additional requirements 
apart from these job offer requirements for the applicant. So the common requirement for all three of them is that they should have an intention to live in Ontario. If their job requires a valid license, they should have it. And if they're in Canada, then they should have a legal status of living in Canada. Okay, now for foreign worker, they should have a minimum two years of work experience in the past five years. That should be full time and paid work experience. For the in-demand skills stream, there should be a minimum of nine months of work experience. And there are two extra conditions that they should prove their language proficiency skills. So if you're good in English, you should have an IELTS or CELPIP score of CLB4 or higher and an ECA of their degree or diploma as well. About the international student, they should have a Canadian degree or diploma. Guys, apart from this, there is some extra requirements about the employer as well. I'll provide the link from the official website of Government of Ontario. You can check it out. All right, talking about the next category, which is the business category. There's just one stream in there, OINP Entrepreneur Stream. And for that, I'll take you to the official website of Government of Ontario. As I told you, there's just one stream, OINP Entrepreneur Stream. And as a part of this stream, entrepreneurs from outside of Canada are interesting in starting a new business or buying an existing business in Ontario would be given the permanent residence for their business setup for living and working in Ontario. Okay, there are two different stages of this process. That's why I have taken you to this particular page, which is the official website of Government of Ontario. In stage one, you'll have to register an expression of interest by mail. If invited, you have to submit an online application. And then there would be an in-person interview in the OINP office in Ontario. If your stage one application is successful, you must sign a performance agreement. And then there would be a temporary work permit that would be issued to you. And then it would go on to the next stages as per this plan mentioned here. Now let's talk about the mandatory requirements. So as they've listed out here that there are five or six different mandatory requirements. First of all, the business experience. So you must have at least 24 months of full-time business experience in the last five years. So two years of experience in the last five years and you should be there as the business owner or as a senior manager of the management. Now the net worth. It comes down to this. It is very difficult for most of the people, but yes, all of those people who are interested in this, you should note that if your proposed business will be located in the GTA, you must have a minimum net worth of 800,000 Canadian dollars. And if it's outside GTA, then it should be the 400,000 Canadian dollars. So if you want to convert it in the currency that belongs to your home country, you can go on to Google and check it out. Similarly, it has mentioned about the personal investment funds here as well that if your proposed business will be located within the GTA area, you must make a minimum personal investment of 600,000 Canadian dollars and control at least one third of the equity in the business. And similarly for outside of GTA region, it should be a minimum personal investment of 200,000 Canadian dollars and control at least one third of the equity in the business. Apart from that, you should have an active involvement in the management of the business. The primary purpose of investing capital in the business must be to make profit. It must not be to derive interest, dividends or capital gains. And about the job creation, which is the foremost thing. Uh, it says that you must create at least two permanent full-time jobs for Canadian citizens or permanent residents. There are certain other requirements as well. I won't go into too much detail. I'll provide the link. Uh, this is a web page directly from the official website of Government of Ontario. So this is the first time information. If you want more details on this, you can go onto this page and check the details out. All right, now the third category, which is the human capital category. There are five streams in that category. And to discuss this category, I'll take you to this old video. All these details mentioned in this video still holds true. So I'll take you to this. I created this in a tabular format so it would be very easy for you to understand. Okay, as I told you, there are five different streams there. Master's graduate, PhD graduate, express entry, French speaking skilled worker, express entry, human capital priorities, and the express entry skilled trade stream. Please don't mind the incorrect spelling in here. That was a typo. So I've listed out some of the points here. Those are the general criterias. 
So if you check out the first point is the express entry profile needed. So for the first two streams, that is the master's graduate stream and the PhD graduate stream, the express entry profile is not needed. But for the next three streams, the express entry profile is needed. So you need to go on to the official website of Government of Canada and create your express entry profile. Now the minimum educational qualification. So as this is the master's graduate stream, so you should have a master's degree from a Canadian college. Mind it, if you have the degree from elsewhere, it won't work for this stream. Similarly, you should have a PhD degree from a Canadian college or university if you want to go and apply the PR through the PhD graduate stream. And for the other two, the French speaking skilled worker and the human capital priority stream, you need an equivalent of Canadian bachelor's degree or above, which means you need an educational credential assessment. And for the third stream, it is not specified. Okay, talking of the score of your language test, it should be CLB 7 in English or French for master's graduate, PhD graduate and human capital priority stream. However, in talking of French speaking skilled worker, as the name suggests, you should have CLB 7 in French and CLB 6 in English. While for the Express Entry Skill Trades stream, it is a bit easier. It's CLB 5 in English or French. Now the minimum job experience. If you've got the master's degree from Canadian college, you need not have any job experience. Similarly for the PhD graduate stream as well. But for the next two streams, you should have at least one year of experience in the past five years. And for the skilled trade stream, you should have minimum one year of experience in the past two years. Is NOI required from Ontario? So the good thing is that it's not required for the first two streams, while it is required for all these three streams mentioned here. So that's it guys. We discussed about all the different streams of the Ontario PNP program. If you want to know more about the human capital priority stream, which is the most popular stream among all of these streams that we have discussed, because for this stream, you need not have a job offer. You need not have studied in Canada. You can check out this video, the other video. I'll provide a link to this video in the description box as well. In this video where I've mentioned about the human capital priority stream, you'll get to know all the necessary details about the process, the eligibility criteria, and some tips and tricks as well. So if you're interested in that, you can check that video out. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button. And yes, please put your comment down in the comment section below. I would love to hear some feedback from you.